But since I only did one little thing here, what I'm going to do is simply exit out of that, put this frame back in as a starting point, and just restart creating the animation. Now that would be one way to do it. There is another way, and that's if you had saved the, if you had rendered the animation first in our rendering, you could have one level of undo. Uh, I know uh, Pixelon's uh, NEFX has 10 levels of undo, but I think that's while you're inside the plugin. I'm not sure if it keeps that when you go out of it and jump back into it later. I just don't know the product that well yet, so I, there probably is a way to do it, I just don't know it. So one thing I'm going to simply do is recreate a starting animation right there, 99 frames, right? And this time, before I'm actually going to the animation here, I'll do a couple of things to change this and that. Uh, one thing is I'll, I'll put a, a lightning. Uh, let's go to the linear tool here and look for lightning. And I'll put a little bit of lightning right down there. Um, and I'll put that in at a couple of different places. So right around, let's see, uh, just around here, I'll put the lightning coming down here. Next frame, you know, you can use the cursor keys to go next frame or prior frame. So you can review the two. Then you can go perhaps a big lightning strike like this, even a few more. There you go. And this cloud is really active now. It's like every frame it's doing two or three lightning strikes at the same time. Right? And then perhaps we have one going through the entire cloud. So we have one here, one there, lots of lightning. This is a big lightning storm. And what we want to do therefore also is to have uh, the whole area get a little bit lighter, brighter when it's actually doing that. So we go to a filter here and make this a little bit brighter, adjust the value and uh, increase the brightness a little bit. So the whole scene seems to be lightening up from that, right? There you go. Um, so, so now we have perhaps some of these lightning storms we need to, these should also be brighter. So uh, you see the idea, we just need to brighten them up, use the filter on an individual frame basis here. Now, the, the trick is going to be to make it look like it's raining but just under this cloud. So we need basically a selection mask that allows it to rain to apply a filter only in that area. And so the way we'll do that is to actually go right there with the uh, lasso. That would be a really good way to kind of select the area where the rain is coming from. Okay, so we can... Uh, wait, that was not the right one. Let's do that again. Okay, so we can go... Oh, that's not... What's that? The magic wand? Oh yeah, no, that's not what I want. Here's the lasso. There it is. Alright, so the lasso, I'm going to select kind of like this area under the cloud. Alright, so you see the marching ants and it's uh, going to allow, if I, if I look at the selection, it's going to, if I store it, it's showing me where it is. Uh, I don't want a crisp on or off though. I want that selection to be kind of transitioning or gradual. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a, a selection blur and you can do a box filter for a quick one or a Gaussian blur. Either way, um, we can do uh, even show the alpha here in this case. Do a little bit of blurring on that selection. So it's not going to be selecting everything or nothing. It's going to kind of do a transition in between. Still, inside of that is where we can actually apply filters or that's where we can paint. Okay, if we look at the uh, stored copy of that, the white area is where it's selected. All right, <clears throat> so let's go and now apply our filter. Again, that's the NEFX animation in the miscellaneous category. We can launch it right here. And uh, it's not showing the alpha channel here, but it will use it when we actually render. Um, so let's go back to our rain. It should remember when you click and preview it, it shows you here in the preview. That's a great feature, by the way. You don't have to double click in order to see what it's doing in the main view. You just single click and it pre previews it and gives you a, a nice idea of what that rain filter looks like, either in a single or in an animated mode. You can click that, animate on or off. Preview basically doesn't show it, but it's a great feature to use there. So I highly recommend you use that and then go and load this into any effects. And here you'll actually see it in the entire view. Okay, in this in this preview it doesn't apply the alpha channel. But when it's actually going to render it later on, it will apply it to against the alpha channel. So let's say we want that to be a little bit denser, a little bit more drops, a little bit more visual, 
uh, more rain, more opacity, and so on. And uh, maybe the wind blowing a little bit to the left. There you go. But in the end, we know there's an alpha channel here that will that selection will make sure that the particles only appear in that area. All right, let's go render that. So now, while it's rendering, it's using the alpha channel, the selection and therefore the rain will only apply here and as we render it we'll see the different animations going on here like the lightning bolts going through there showing up quite nicely and there's the frame that we made brighter as well and we have now added the rain uh, almost done we add uh, let's see in the upper left here you see the frame count 98 99 it's done now we can go and uh, stop the selection from showing the marching ants that doesn't clear the selection by the way, the selection is still in effect so if you want to really turn it off you go here and if you want to clear it all together you clear it right there okay but now we can go scrub through that and you can see that it's doing that rainfall very heavy downpour just under the cloud alright well thanks uh, for watching this little tutorial my name is Philip Steiger with TheBest3D.com and this was another Daily Dose with PD Howler.